Tell I'm excited. I'm, 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 I'm excited. All right. Amen. Adamantbeliever.com forward slash unclean Halloween. Amen. I needed to just update my Halloween message because churches and folks are wilding again. Now they're not just having trunk or treat. They're going trick or treat. And telling their churches, giving them directives on how to do it safely. When the devil's on 1,000 right now. And so we, we, we just got to, we got to deal with this. Amen. And also we will have signs. Carmina, you going to make some more? We're going to have signs again in the um, visitor center next week. So you can put a sign in your yard to keep people from yeah. ringing your doorbell. Amen? amen. So we'll do that again. And um, amen. Adamantbeliever.com forward slash unclean Halloween. Amen. Yeah, it's sad. Whenever contemplating whether a Christian should celebrate Halloween, we must first consider the spirit of the holiday. Now, you would think you would consider the spirit of the holiday first. What is the spirit of the holiday? Is it cheer or fear? Now, this should, you know... If everybody was saved and a real Christian, this should be all you have to quote. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. For God hath not given us what? So if it didn't come from God, whose spirit is it? That's it. All right, everybody stand. No, I mean, that ought to be it. If God didn't give us a spirit of fear, why are we publicizing fear and turning our children into things that people are afraid of? That can't be the spirit of the Lord if he didn't give us the spirit of fear. He said the spirit he gave us was of power, of love, and what? A sound mind. So then the spirit of fear comes from the enemy. Amen. And the Bible even says that hell is reserved for the fearful. The lake of fire. So we know we shouldn't be dressing our children up to look like Beetlejuice. I'm scared of him. The Joker and that's the long haired Joker, the Heath Ledger Joker. He died playing that role. I'm not dressing my kids up like Chucky. I don't like when little kids run and they're not even dressed like him. Don't run, don't make your legs do that. You're too little. You shouldn't be that quick. That reminds me. <laughs> Chucky was quick, boy. He was quick. Are you too quick for them legs, brother? You just learned how to walk. You ain't supposed to be running like that. I don't like when kids do that. I don't care what color hair they have. <laughs> yeah! The day set aside to glorify frightening images and scary themes is a day that promotes darkness and the appearance of what? Evil. First Thessalonians said to abstain from what? I mean, we ought to be able to do this with just scripture. If we're going to abstain from all appearance of evil, that means you abstain from Halloween celebration. If that is the, the appearance of evil. 
The Bible speaks against thinking or promoting things that encourage evil. When we use our bodies to celebrate evil, we bring ourselves under the power of it. Of what? Of evil. When you use your body to celebrate evil. Amen? So when you go to the Halloween party, you doing the monster mash. You are using <laughs> your body to celebrate evil. You know all the moves in the Thriller video by memory. Remember, we did know that. When we was young, we knew we, we just doing Thriller, didn't know we were just worshiping the devil. Even the old crazy Jehovah Witness church told Michael and his family, y'all crazy for this. Now, we crazy, but y'all real crazy because this is of the occult. Remember that? And they was going to throw him out of it. But then he wrote a check. <laughs> well, you're not that crazy. Everybody makes mistakes. But yeah, so, <laughs> but yeah, you can't when you celebrate or use your body to celebrate evil. Then you bring yourself under the power of it. First Corinthians 6 and 12. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are... <laughs> They're just not exper expedient. That means I just don't, I shouldn't do that. All things are lawful for me, but I'm not going to be brought under the power of any of it. Man, the scripture is preaching on this first slide. Oftentimes, parents struggle to stand against Halloween because they want their children to fit in. That's what it is. They want their children to fit in. Because they have the Halloween parties at the school. They have the Halloween parties, you know, in the neighborhood. And your kids, but mama, why can't we do it? Well, and I'm going to say this, and this might hurt somebody's feelings. If your kid get all the way up to Halloween and still asking, can they do it? I wonder what y'all been doing the rest of the year in your house. Seem like to me the foundation of that thing should have already been dealt with. Your children should already know and not even want to do it. Oh, I ain't celebrating the devil now. But if they, why, mama, why everybody else doing it? Because you just can't. If you got to have that conversation every year, then you're not properly instructing your children. Amen. That should be a one-time conversation, and if necessary, a beat down. And I promise you, I'm going to do the monster mash with the belt. <laughs> the Bible said, well, well, but when the standard in the home is established, look at somebody say established. When the standard of the home is established, the children will not be shocked by their parents' stance against this evil day. When the standard is established, nobody's coming to church next week looking for a skeleton hanging up in here. Nobody. Nobody at ABC is coming next week looking for me to preach with some wax fangs in my mouth. Praise the Lord, everybody! Nobody's expected that. Amen. Nobody's expecting pumpkin faces, jack-o'-lanterns, lanterns, lanterns. <laughs> Said it real country, didn't the jack-o'-lantern. But jack-o'-lantern, nobody's expecting that at ABC. Amen. Why? Because we teach against evil, <laughs> the devil, demons. We ain't trying to pack this church out with a bunch of folks by not saying certain things. That's right. It's not that kind of church. You don't know that. Proverbs 22 and 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. And then when he is old, he will not what? He will not depart from it. You got to start young though. Hey Amen. You can't wait till they 15 and then start. No, no, let me have a little talk about Halloween. It's too late. 
When parents do not stand against the evils in music, movies, or society, then it's hard for their children to accept the truth about Halloween and why they should not participate. So you have to stand against certain things. Certain music you know can't be in your house. Amen. Certain movies y'all can't watch in my house. Turn it off. Amen. You have to make that stance in your home. You paying the bills? Man, if, you, if I'm paying the bills, stuff ain't going on. I don't want to happen. Amen. So you got to stand up against certain things. Ezekiel 44 and 23. And they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and profane and cause them to discern between the clean and what? The unclean. You have to make that difference in your home. What is clean? What is unclean? Right. Amen. Amen. Oh, Lord. Jesus wing. I don't think he's happy about that. Let me attach his name to that stupidness. And who carved the face in the pumpkin? That ain't Jesus. It wasn't Jesus to begin with. You carved Serapis Bay in a, in a, in a, in a pumpkin. You, you, you carved an ascension master. Roman God in a, in a pumpkin, and you think that's Jesus. Amen. Trunk or treat. I'm still not understanding what that is and why it's called that. And you don't want to get no candy out of the trunk of some cars. That candy been in there a long time. They got that old peppermint log great grandmama used to have. Y'all remember that? Where the plastic been on it so long. <laughs> you can't separate the plastic from the, from the peppermint. And every now and then, somebody get a hammer and just try to... <laughs> Do they still sell those? Oh, Cracker Barrel. Yeah, it's at Cracker Barrel. Mm -hmm. I know some of y'all haven't been to Cracker Barrel all month. Oh, but you waiting. The, the, the morning of the the morning of the 29th. Because they have crispy edge pancakes. Those are hard to find. Yeah, I'm going to say it. Crispy Y'all ought to be trained by now. Y'all like, hey, you ain't got your flesh under control. This shouldn't bother you. The little bottle of pure maple syrup resting on the crispy edge. The butter, see the crispy edge keep the butter from even falling off of it. Talk about it, man. Oh, boy. This is hilarious. Y'all were cheering on when I was rebuking the devil and stuff. I started talking about crispy edge, crispy edge, edge pancakes and pure syrup. One time I messed around and went to Canada. And remember when I brought that Vermont syrup back from Canada? Had the Canadian flag on it? You know that's where the, you know. I need to hush. We might have to fly to Canada. <laughs> they got the real syrup. They got the real syrup. All right. Churches. Churches that do alternative celebrations on this day are compromising the integrity of the biblical message that makes our counterculture of Christianity potent. Yeah, you're compromising the integrity. We're a counterculture, meaning we're against pop culture. But when you conform to pop culture to reach people, you just compromised. 
What is it that you really have if you have to dilute it? Take its potency away. Make it impotent. What is it that you really have? Do you really have power? Because the Holy Ghost has come upon you? The Bible said that the Holy Ghost empowered them to be witnesses. So if it empowered you to be a witness, why do you have to dilute the message to get someone's attention? And what kind of product are you going to draw with a diluted message? Is that what you want in your church? Nonconformity sends the strongest message. Nonconformity will cause people to ask questions. What you doing for Halloween? Nothing. Why not? You don't have any plans? No, I don't celebrate Halloween. Why not? Oh, it's a day of evil. Like, when did evil become good? Like, you good with celebrating evil? They'd be like, I mean, but, huh? Yeah, it's evil, dude. Like, I ain't, why would I celebrate evil when there's so many other days I can celebrate good? Right. And they'll be like, oh, it is kind of evil, ain't it? Yeah, look, just, just, just look at the calendar and see when bad things started happening to you. Start Xing those days off around late September, early October, and then a few weeks after, you'll see a pattern. Every year, you get the blues around that time because that's witchcraft time. Every year, things start changing for you. Yeah, you start battling issues you thought you had overcome. You start battle, battling feelings you thought you had dealt with. Why do I feel like that? Why is my insecurity so great right now? Why do I feel so needy? Why am I so angry? Why do I hate people? Yeah. This is the time. This is the witching time. Romans 6 and 19. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your member servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members to righteousness unto holiness. So we don't yield our members to sin. Evil and darkness. Amen? Amen. We're children. Look at somebody and say, I'm a child of the light. Oh, Lord. Amen. These are all folk that's possessed. They all possess. Don't be trying to, well, no. You don't want to meet none of them. That's how you know they possess. You be watching them, but you don't want to jump out that TV and run after you. <laughs> you know. Nah, they just make believe. They let that little tricycle with Saul start running. <laughs> <laughs> you will have legs like Chucky. You will be out of that. That tricycle come off that movie screen with that bell on it, and he just get the <laughs> Oh. And you know, I don't these these things don't scare me. Somebody like, I wish you'd move on, Pastor, because they are looking at my row. I, I don't know about anybody else, but they looking right at my row. So can you kind of move this slide along, please? Cause that it now, nah, yeah. Let me, let me. So I don't like him. When we yield our members to unclean things, we come under its power. When we are under their influence, we begin to change from being a God imager to an image to imaging darkness and worldliness. Second Corinthians says, "Wherefore come out from among them, be ye separate." Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Let me tell you what all of this is saying. Let me get them off the screen. Okay, y'all good? So, horror movies, watching, celebrating, and enjoying evil, you are actually opening yourself up to the spirits behind it. 
Now, you may have done research or whatever, but I promise you that your life reflects the movies that you watch. You can try to argue with me all you want. Not my life, Pastor. I'm good. I promise. Very close friend of mine, John Ramirez, spent 25 years in this stuff. Y'all know John. Spent 25 years in this stuff. He, he told me, he sat down with me one time and just started going through movies and showing me what was real and what was not. And he knows because they called the people he knows in to bring the stuff in so they can put it in the movies. Now, they're not putting it in there to scare you and sell the movie because most of the movies they do that to aren't big sellers. They aren't big movies. They aren't huge fa franchises. Horror is not a huge franchise anyway. A lot of people just don't go see horror movies. But for the ones that do see it and have an opening in their lives, a door. They bring things into their life that change the course of their lives. Yeah. Yeah. And so Dungeons and Dragons, the movie bombed. It was awful. They don't care. They know that the Dungeons and Dragons movie is going to lead to people playing the game, which is going to lead to people getting stuck in the upside down. And I know they get stuck in the upside down because I used to have to bring them back from the upside down. This same church we're going to speak at, Trinity. Me and my wife, I used to speak there a lot. And we actually did a campfire uh, service with the youth where we were on a campsite. That's how I know we can use this building next door because we was outside in the woods with a projector and a screen. We were doing it every time I would do it. Demons would just manifest in these in kids, kids, teenagers, constantly. What were they doing? Playing Dungeons and Dragons. Hooked on anime. Yeah, and you don't understand. See, everyone, and I just had this conversation with my son, and we were talking. I was telling uh, Jonathan, every Everyone has a limit. And for some, it's different. But certain things you do can trigger things that you want to stop doing. And you have to know that for who you are. Amen. Certain things I can't watch. I just can't. I can't watch that. I cast demons out for real, so I'm not watching The Exorcist. That right. ain't no training video. I'm not watching demons. I'm not watching no demons in people. I'm not watching Venom. That's a demon. Well, no, it's, see, it's science. It's biology. It's from outer space. What you think a demon is? He ain't from this realm. He's from another dimension. And the demon is talking through the dude. But you, you want to watch it so bad. And you'll never relate it to the condition of your life. I deal with it all the time, y'all. Deal with it. I used to have stacks and stacks of comic books. Stacks and stacks of uh, uh, magic cards from teens. Why do you think the devil create the stuff? He creates that stuff to stop your life. Make you turn a message like this off. Yeah. Some of y'all too old for that anyway. Why are you still watching vampires? Well, I just watched the black and white Christopher Lee versions. <laughs> you can't watch that. Amen. And some people can watch it and go to sleep and don't nothing happen. Some people watch it, go to sleep, and wake up with the teeth. Yeah. And that's why I was talk talking to my son about it. I was telling him that's why peer pressure is so dangerous. Because kids will put pressure on you to do what they can do, but you can't do it. When you do it, something different happens. God had a call on my life to grow up and do this right now. 
So when I was young, I didn't mesh well with the stuff other folks was doing. They'd go to the parties. I couldn't go. My mama would keep me. But even when I would sneak and try to go, sneak, I'd, I'd be in there like, I, I'm not supposed to be in here. I'm different from the rest of them. No, nah, no, nah, you don't have to clap at that. You better look at somebody and say, you better know your limits. And I'm talking to young folks and adults. Some stuff you can't watch. No, I can't do that. No, no, no. Has a different effect on you because of what you've been through. The devil opened up a door in your life. You got to keep that door closed. And you can't watch, listen to, or even entertain anything with a key. Or you'll be right back up here on the altar messed up again. The Greek word for uncleanness is akathartos. It means impure in thought and action. It is usually attached to sins of sexual perversion, including homosexuality, lesbianism, incest, child molestation, rape, pornography, sadomasochism. This would also include the desire to pollute one's body with drugs, which is pharmacia, sorcery, smoke, toxins, pain, torture, etc. Strange piercings, tattoos, all of that stuff is included in this. An unclean spirit causes those things. I don't care if you got the cutest tattoo on earth. An unclean spirit caused it because you had to go into an unclean facility, a temple, to have that put on. I don't care if it's the, the, the My Little Pony. You went into a lair to have that done. Amen. Uh, yeah, you know, I know everybody got them now. I'm going to talk about it Saturday, but amen. The problem with these perversions is not just the actions, but the thoughts which guide the actions. Sexual and moral impurity begins in our what? Thoughts. So if it begins in your thought, that means it's contingent upon what you're thinking about. So if you're watching a two-hour movie about the devil, what are you thinking about? If you're listening to music by the devil, by a devil, what are you thinking about? You're playing a game where at the end you got to fight the devil. That's what Dungeons and Dragons is. Hey, what, you, what? What are you thinking about? If Satan can change the thoughts, he can possess the life. Proverbs 23 and 7, for as he thinketh in his heart, what? Being entertained by evil themes, costumes, movies, music, and imagery gives devils access to our mind and thoughts. Through unclean thoughts, the enemy is able to cause what? <laughs> Through unclean thoughts, he's able to what? Cause unclean acts. So if you're watching a movie filled with nothing but unclean acts, it's going to give you what? Unclean thoughts, which is going to give you what? Yeah. Thoughts don't have to be even impure. They can just make you think about something. You wasn't thinking about a hamburger until you heard BK, have it your way. Somebody knew the other part. Catchy, catchy jingle. We was at our house and Xander was asleep on the couch. And that commercial came on. He woke up from his sleep, looked back, watched the TV. And then when, the, when they finally said, B, can you have it your way? Whatever they say at the end. And just went back to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Catchy jingle. That's the most catchy, probably. And burger ain't even that good. <laughs> Why is the jingle better than the burger? Y'all need to work on that burger. Quit telling people that's flame bro. They paint them lines on that. Bro. I know them lines was already there. Don't you? Then they put in a little broiler thing. Was that my sister that worked there? Tanya exposed the whole franchise. She worked at Burger King. I said, boy, how do they do that? She said, them lines are already on there. They put them things in these little brawlers and heat them up. 
Tanya had an expose. Tanya was doing the truth behind <laughs> Burger King back in the day. I was so disappointed. And then put mayonnaise on it. Why you put mayonnaise on a burger? Look at somebody. Wait a minute now. I'm from up north, pastor. Up north, we put mayonnaise on them. Well, in the south, it's mustard. And if we decide we want mayonnaise, you better mix it in with the ketchup and the mustard and make the special sauce. I ain't going to eat no burger with just... What, what is wrong with me today? It was that song, BK, Have It Your Way. It was the, I told you, see, I told you, the power of music. I'm preaching about nothing but food because I sung that song. That's what happens when you watch a scary movie. <laughs> Through unclean thoughts, the enemy is able to produce or to cause unclean acts. These acts keep a person in bondage to what? You want to get rid of an unclean spirit? You got to get rid of unclean thoughts. You want to get rid of unclean thoughts? You got to watch something else. <laughs> unclean spirits. Ooh, she just kind of rose up too, didn't she? <laughs> unclean spirits can enter at a young age, in Mark 7 and 25, a woman brought her young, and the Greek word means little, daughter to Jesus to be delivered from a what? An unclean spirit, a little girl. In Luke 9 and 42, Jesus cast an unclean spirit out of a small boy. Unclean spirits can enter into animals. In Mark 5 and 13, when Jesus commanded the unclean spirits to leave the manic of Gadara, the, in, the demons asked to be sent into a herd of wine. Unclean spirits have the traits of animals and take those traits into the people they possess. Almost every time I've been in church and somebody starts with, the, with, with, with a manifestation, they start with a growl like an animal and it sounds like an animal in there yeah just when I did the rewind in Raleigh I mean uh, was that Raleigh Raleigh and I'm praying and the dude he was right next to me and I heard growling yeah and then he sounded just like venom that's why I don't play with venom yeah y'all y'all can keep watching that if you want something about that is bad I was casting demons out of one dude. He went and got the venom toy and the carnage toy and brought them to me and was trying to use their power over me while I was casting the demons out of them. And this boy in Riley, he was right there and he was talking and then what was in him was talking and it sounded just like that, that movie. So I don't play with that stuff. That ain't entertainment. Unclean spirits have the traits of animals and take those traits into the people they possess. When the manic had been possessed with the unclean spirit, he did not want to live in a home, but in a cave like an animal, the Bible says. He might have started out being distant from others, a loner, you know how they do, the goth boy, but he eventually regressed to living in the tombs like an animal. I got this animal up because this was the goat of Mendez that they prayed the sins of the people. They put the sins of the people in this goat to drive him away from the camp to, take, to show how God's mercy would take the sins away from us. But, yeah, the scapegoat. But in the process of doing that, there were mystics and different things among the children of Israel who began to worship this goat. And the goat became what we know as Baphomet, right? Which is the manifestation of all sin in a goat. Well, if you like the movie 300, he was in it. And I know, man, the fight scenes in 300 were second to none. 
We had never seen nothing like that. The leadership of the army and all of that, oh, you could preach off of it. But you can't. Because the rest of the movie was possessed. They had lepers, just like the Bible, talking to an oracle who was high from a potion. And she was a teenage girl. And she was naked in the movie. Then they went to the cave and he was in there. Baphomet, Pan. He wasn't just still, he was moving. In the movie. And he was playing his little whatever he plays. I said, when I saw that, me and my wife was watching it. Remember that? And we couldn't believe it. And some of y'all just let it play. You know, ain't paying attention. You're doing something else and it's playing in the background, which is the worst thing you can do. It's how used to this stuff we are. Fight scenes ain't that good. I didn't say, that's okay. You know, I, I knew it was going to dry up in here. Yeah, just stank. Our generation, they've just become stank. Because unclean spirits cause people to lose their modesty. It's a demon that makes you show your body to other people. Yes, it is. It's a demon that makes you sexualize yourself in public. Try to draw looks. Even when you come to church, you know your cleavage is out. That's a demon. That's an unclean spirit. Making you do that. You know how tight your dress is. You could sit in the car. You have to ride the bus and hold the thing. <laughs> yeah, you knew how tight it was. You stood up the whole time. And then come to church and walk to the second row in the front. No, I'm telling the truth. You, 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 you know what you're doing when you get dressed. You know how I know? Because too much truth goes forth in here. Too much truth goes forth in here. You're not blind to anything. Now, if you was at the potter's house, I'd say, okay, maybe so. The men show cleavage there. But when you in this church, you know better. Unclean spirits, it caused people to lose their modesty. In Luke 8 and 27, that same maniac was driven by unclean spirits to live naked. Took all his clothes off in the graveyard. However, when he was delivered, he wanted to wear clothes in front of the Lord and others in the city. Yeah, that's why these folk look like this. Draws and no shirt and hoochie mama, just... Stank generation because they're full of unclean spirits. Unclean spirits cause mutilation. In Luke 9, 39, the unclean spirit took the little boy and the Bible says, tore him and bruised him. In Matthew's account, the demon threw him into fire and water. Tearing his flesh because... That's how you know an unclean spirit is there. They want to put all these piercings all over in their forehead, in their, the top of the nose, bottom of the nose, tongues, then tattoo themselves off. Did that hurt? Yeah, it hurt, but, but you got a whole arm sleeve done? Yeah. You know, we're so used to looking at it now, we don't see that it's an unclean spirit. These are demons showing themselves. In Mark 5 and 5, that man of Gadar cut himself, the Bible said, with stones. So he cut himself and sat in a cave, chained in bondage. They had to chain this boy up. Unclean spirits drive those they inhabit toward pain, sadomasochism, chain, beating, cutting, burning their flesh, etc., and Luke tells us, don't make any cuttings in your, I mean, Leviticus tells us, don't make any cuttings in, your, cuttings in your flesh for the dead, 
nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. Amen. I know you may have gotten a tattoo when you was young, whatever. We, you just break the power of it and don't get another way. And teach your children how to keep their bodies away from unclean things. Amen. Snatch the earrings at your son when he's even posing in the clip-ons. No, nah, bro, you ain't having no earrings in my house, brother. You ain't pissing your ear. Yeah, you got to stand up. See, they say when you preach this, people won't come. I'm going to preach it anyway. I don't care who comes. In Mark 3, 11, Luke 4 and 33, Acts 8 and 7, unclean spirits came out of people crying with loud voices. Unclean spirits want to be what? Notice. That's what you go to manifesting in here. We're taking you in the back. You will not have an audience. We're going to cast a demon out, but nobody will see it. I'm serious. They want an audience. Why are you preaching? I want you to come over there. What's your name? I just have a whole conversation. Man, I'm preaching. Why would I have a conversation with a devil and I'm preaching a message? We taking that in the room. Amen. Because unclean spirits, they want an audience. They want to be noticed. This causes them to act through their host by changing the way their host dresses, speaks, behaves, and views themselves. It's a demon. It's an unclean spirit. These spirits want to be seen through the lifestyle choices of the individual they are oppressing. You ain't never seen no clean cut suit wearing gangster that's out driving, doing drive-bys. Might do no drive-by in a three-piece suit. No. No, he gonna have long braids, lips black, earrings, sagging, no shirt on, tatted all, he gonna look the part. He gonna look like what he's doing. I'm a drive-by shooter. You can line him up with five dudes in here and say, pick the drive-by shooter. Him. You're not gonna confuse him with a banker. You looking like that, you can't have my money. You might not give it back. You ain't gonna deposit it. Because it's a certain look. Spirits want to be seen through the lifestyle choices of the individuals they are oppressing. Okay, let me get them off. Unclean spirits, now this is the one. They're very persistent. Very persistent. If you've dealt with stuff when you were young, molestation, rape, those kinds of things, demons are going to, unclean spirits are going to be very persistent. That's why you have to draw a circle around yourself and say, you know what? Some stuff I can't let in this circle. This will take me back to something that I got free from. I can't I can't go back. So this circle has to stay. I can't let you in my circle. You talk about people too much. I'm delivered. I can't I can't do that. Can't let you in my circle. You watch stuff that I can't watch. You listen to stuff I can't listen. Listen to. That's why I don't like Christians that can't stand up, to stand up for themselves. They get around unbelievers and you can't tell they say. And the unbelievers can't tell that they say. Well, I know you haven't drawn any lines around yourself. So what are you, just a free for all for unclean spirits? Amen. I like when they're around me and, you know, they're like, man, oh, excuse me. I didn't mean to say that. Okay, you excuse, whatever. But if they keep saying, I'm saying, hey, brother, I excused you once. Quit that cussing around me. Quit cussing around me. Don't talk like that around me. Why are you talking like that anyway? Let's have a conversation about that. I got delivered from cussing. So I want to be around cussers. That's going to make me slip up. Lord knows. (laughs) So I don't want to hear it. No. Because unclean spirits are persistent. I know I'm preaching in here. Amen. The message before the message. 
But in Luke 9 and 40, the father of the little boy who was possessed with an unclean spirit told Jesus that the disciples had not been able to cast out this demon. After Jesus cast out the unclean spirit, the disciples said, wait, come over here, Jesus. I want to ask you something. Matthew 17. They said, why, why couldn't we do it? And he stated in verse 21, this kind goeth out but by prayer. Fasting was later added for emphasis, but it was prayer was the word he used. This comes out by prayer. Yeah. That means that this needed a little more. Because it had worked for him before. Didn't work this time. Jesus warned that if the house is what? Empty, swept, and garnished. That means you got delivered. The unclean spirits will come back and the end will be worse than the beginning if you let them in. So trick or treating is not to be taken lightly. Some people never get free from the unclean things that they expose themselves to during Halloween. Summary! The Bible commands us to have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but it tells us to what? Expose them. Halloween should not be used as a day of conformity because that will only lead to confusion and further compromise concerning what is good and what is evil. When we take evil themes and make them happy and fun, we are making good evil and evil good. The Bible says this is wrong. Isaiah 5 and 20 says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness. He says, woe unto them, meaning they're going to get in trouble. The church, Christians, and especially believing parents should always keep the line of demarcation visible and clear when it comes to evil versus good. After all, if this line is blurred, how will our children know the difference between which is forbidden and that which is good. So hold the line parents. Look at somebody and say hold the, line. hold the line. Hold the line parents. And never back off of your strong adamant stance. We are the only protection our children have. So we must stand against the evils of Halloween. No matter what. Amen. Deuteronomy says. 18. I read this last week I think. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire or that uses divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or a witch. There shall not be found among you. Can I say that again? Yeah. Hey, what is a witch doing in here? Why are we dressing somebody like a witch? There shall not be found among you. Anyone that does these things, an observer of times, we don't do our horoscope in here. There ain't no Sagittarius. Put them old raggedy necklaces up. They don't turn colors anyway. Trying to get a date. What's your sign? The cross is my sign. That's the only sign I have. Sagittarius and People, and they still do it, Elder. They still do it. See them online. I'm a Capricorn. What is a Capricorn? I don't know, but I, I'm one. No, a charmer, a consulter with familiar spirits, a wizard, or a necromancer. You know what a charmer really is? That's a person that makes evil attractive. <laughs> For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord drew, drove out the folks that was, in, that was before you. He says, thou shall be what? Perfect with the Lord thy God. Everyone stand to your feet. So, how many of you know that I told the truth in here today? All right. 
Oh. You know, people all over the world just comment and let me know things when I send certain messages out and different things. And sometimes it's overwhelming because it makes me really realize why the devil just painted such a big target on my back. But then it makes sense because God's people need freedom. I have no other motivation than to preach the gospel. That's it. Preach the truth. That's it. I'm motivated by God to do it. It's not money. It's not fame. It's none of that stuff. Reason, I mean, I'd preach something else if that was it. But I just want you to know what's true. And when it comes to unclean spirits, I want you to be able to draw that circle around yourself. I want you to have the courage to draw that circle. And if only you are standing in it and everybody else is standing outside of it, it doesn't even matter. If it's protecting you from what the enemy's trying to do in your life, you need to have the strength to draw that circle. So if that's you, I want you to come up and you know you got to draw that circle. Man, stuff happened to you when you were young, stuff happened in your life, all that. And it's just, man, hey, it's just some stuff I can't be a part of. But I want strength to be able to say it, stand up for it, feel myself getting pulled back into some stuff. Round October always happens. Pull back into some mess, pull back into something. October comes, man. But I want the courage to draw a circle around myself in spite of what any of them are doing. Got all these, got some great athletes. Little Mike, great athlete, but in, is in. Uh, BJ and all of them, they, they're sports players. And you got to draw a line more than anybody where God is trying to, you know, what y'all are doing, you got to just draw the line. You play. But man, I can only play. Some of the stuff y'all doing, <laughs> I, can't, I can't be around. And you'll be surprised how many people will follow you out just because you had the courage to stand. But we just got to draw that circle around ourselves I'm going to stand strong no matter what month it is I'm going to be able to stand Amen nothing unclean is going to overpower me my heart is cleansed by the blood of Jesus everyone just bow your heads Father God, clean us. Cleanse our hearts. Create in us a clean heart. Renew a right spirit in us. Father God, take out all impurities, all impure thoughts, feelings. No matter what was done to us, no matter what was said to us, no matter what we went through, clean us, Lord. Clean our hearts, clean our minds. Clean our vessels. Wash us, Lord. Wash our spirits. Clean us, Father God. Wash our hands. Father God, clean us. Clean our minds. Clean our thoughts. Clean our intentions. Clean us. Just clean us. Clean us. You died so that we could be clean. Wash us with hyssop so that we'll be whiter than snow. Purify us, Lord. Clean us. Father, as we ask for this cleansing, Lord, I come against all unclean spirits, any unclean spirit that is trying to attach itself to anyone in here. You have been defeated by the power of the Most High God through Jesus Christ. All principalities, you were made an open show, meaning that the power of God made fun of you in front of everybody. Your power was stripped from you. All you have now is smoke and mirrors. That's it. You aren't real. You're just messing with our minds. So we cast out all unclean spirits in the name of Jesus. No taunting, no haunting. No meddling. No insomnia. No sleep paralysis. We come against it all right now in the name of Jesus every foul spirit, every unclean spirit, we believe that the power of God washes us clean, cleanse us Father God, in the name of Jesus and we'll be clean if you cleanse us we will be clean if 
you wash us, we will be whiter than snow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Father, I pray for everyone that is here and everyone that is hearing this message that you will give us all strength to strengthen that circle around us, that circle of protection, that layer of protection. Protect us, Father God, from the things that so easily beset us, the things that the enemy keeps bringing, keeps doing, keeps saying, keeps making us think about, especially around this time of year. Father God, give us the courage to make that circle strong. We won't cross it and we won't let the enemy cross it. Protect us, Father God. Help us, Lord, when it comes to movie choices, music choices, entertainment choices, places that we go, people that we're around. Give us the courage to stand strong and protect ourselves from unclean spirits. In the name that is above every name we pray and thank you Lord Amen 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 Hug somebody on the way to your seats and say I'm going to be strong Amen Husbands and fathers you got to draw that circle around your house your wife, your children Single mothers, you got to draw that circle. It's just, I'm sorry. Other parents may not understand. My kids can't come over there. I'm sorry. Because they ain't going over there. They're not going over to that place. They're not going to that store. They're not going to the mall by themselves. They're too young. Be done went off in the, what's them stores? Hot Topic and Spencer's and selling all the sex toys and junk. I, I no. No. No, they can't go hang out at the mall without me. Right. Amen. I'm going to walk them around the mall. Then Now they don't want to go. Good. I saved my gas. You got to amen. Draw lines around them. Amen. Protect your home. Protect your children. Ain't nobody scared of Halloween. Halloween is lame. But we're not participating. Amen. Don't you let me hear you put a pumpkin in your window. I'm going. <laughs> Amen. Jake.